What is good? We're back. I'm your host, Casey, joined by my guy, Big Co. What's good? Oh, man, we are prime dynasty season right now. We're in the middle of it. Knee deep dynasty. Loving it. Oh, yeah. It's hot and muggy out here in Charleston, South Carolina. Tonight, we are going to hit you with how to acquire elite dynasty assets. And there's going to be some real trade talk in here. There's going to be some elite asset talk in here. Uh, and this is also kind of going from the asset collector portion of your uh, dynasty bag here to the win now section of your dynasty team and your roster construction. So, sure. Well, mindset um, shift when necessary. Right. Uh, and in and, and this particular show, we are going to talk about acquiring Amon Ross St. Brown uh, and Trey McBride. And then we have at the end of it have some other um, win now moves that that we make that we have made in this particular league. Uh, this this show was brought on by stuff going on in a particular league, but we thought it was a good way to show you kind of how we went about it, how we kind of view going about it. And St. Brown is Whoa, baby. probably St. Brown and McBride. Those are elite dynasty assets, right? Because so top shelf St. Brown's not a guy that like Justin Jefferson it almost doesn't matter where you are in your progression. You got to pry your cold prime out of your cold dead hand. St. Brown's a guy who is putting up around those guys numbers, but isn't quite, you know, categorized yet by everybody as being as good as those guys. So it's, he's like one of the favorite uh, elite assets to buy the 20 point per game, 330 fantasy points. St. Brown, he was fifth um, or sixth in targets with 158 second in receptions, 119 and third in yards with 1,575 tied for fourth in touchdowns with 10. Sure. So, Somehow, like you said, he's not Justin Justin Jefferson, but he's putting up top shelf. Great pop. He's putting up top right. shelf elite dynasty asset wide receiver point per game numbers has grown every year. And you're going to give us some amazing growth numbers. But somehow we pried him out of a warm set of hands, not even dead, cold hands. Yeah. We gave DJ Moore. Mm-hmm. We gave our first next year on a completely studded out win now roster and we added st brown to that roster Mm -hmm. so that's part of the part of the equation so we gave dj Moore. we gave our first next year we gave two four and then 12 man league we gave two four which Um, is two five because there's a 113 but the 113 was given to the losers bracket so that two four is technically two five as far as how many players are off the board and a second round pick in 2026 so if you need to swallow that and digest that we gave dj Moore our first next year two five and a second rounder in 2026 and there's going to be a a nice little section of that formula later on after we get you know get going here but that's the price paid for an elite dynasty receiver and some people might think that's too much i i would hope that you can see why it's worth it and i don't think it was too much no and we're going to go over some other trades from dynasty daddy who we've partnered up with we got some good stuff in the works with him make sure you go check everything that's going on over there because it's it's great but he's got a great trade database some real trades that happened within the last couple of weeks and you can dial right in the settings of of the leagues it's fantastic that's so the key part we're going to get to a bunch of that but just wanted to share a couple more st brown stats with you he was seventh in yak per route run 5.76 in yards per route run 2.63 75 first downs uh that was third overall really some of the bigger things for me were when you saw St. Brown come into the league, he was a 77% slot player in 21, 59% in uh, 22, and then 55% in 23. So 43% out wide this last year as opposed to 20% year one. And throughout all of those years in the reception perception breakdown, which they do a great job over there, make sure you check that out. St. Brown has basically gone up in every single one of their success metrics almost every year, right? So he's his success rate versus zone has gone up pretty much each year his win rate against man has gone up pretty much every year and then press man is up to 75.6 so with him moving around and doing different things he's just continued to work continue to get better continue to grow in this system gotta love that growth you gotta love that growth the dynasty asset the elite dynasty asset that he is you see that growth and when you get to the part where he's in the third league of his third year of his career he's averaging 20 points per game in ppr 
and he gets locked into the system now. He's paid to stay there. His right. quarterback that's, that that's it, might be one of the most crucial parts of the whole thing. Absolutely. So his quarterback is locked in and paid to give him the ball. So golf is there, not going anywhere anytime soon. St. Brown is there, not going anywhere anytime soon. They're playing in that dome together, loving it. And so those the 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 catches. Uh, are, are what we love and, uh, and and PPR the catches are what we love but also St. Brown just finds a way to get in the end zone obviously tech touchdowns can fluctuate but you have a nose for the end zone or you don't and and you have then your quarterback has an ability to throw to a smaller wide receiver in the end zone he's not you know he's not five seven or anything but he's not a six foot five tight end right you know the fact that golf can get him and, and deliver the ball and that whole system is locked in together um, so and then and then to put icing on the cake we we trade we give away all that capital for the elite weapon, but he's 24 years old. Right. He's paid to be there. Just what we, like we said, and he's a, like for, I don't know the guy, but he's a great dude apparently. Mm-hmm. And he's, you don't get that much better in that short amount of time that those stats you just read and the, the consistent improvement without caring about your game, trying to develop your game. And so like, especially in dynasty, you, it's, a, it's about asset protection too, you know? So we did move the chips in for St. Brown, but we did it for a 24-year-old receiver who is about as safe as it gets. Right. You know? Right. No, I think that's a, that's a key part to this is, you know, we certainly could have paid a second-round pick for or and some more for Amari Cooper and been maybe SOL in a year or two. But instead, now we've got six years potentially. Sure. And, and this this we're seeing growth year over year. So the value could even continue to rise yeah. on St. Brown where he gets up into there. You know, like you said, he is locked into golf. He's locked into the Lions. Now... Ben Johnson might leave, but he's but he's waiting for the right job. Maybe he doesn't leave, but you know, and even if he does leave, you know, the marks of good organizations is they have guys behind him who have been absorbing all of this information, who are ready to go on put their own little spin on it, but be able to kind of continue carrying the torch. And we've seen that with the good offenses and the good coordinators um, in this league. Yep, so yep. Well, that'll be important. Uh, but you know, St. Brown just going out there and these were these were his numbers out wide this year 61 receptions 922 yards 15.1 yards per reception six tds 44 first downs and then in the slot 80 catches 867 yards 10.8 yards um that's ridiculous per reception five tds and 49 first downs those are two good seasons man those are two good seasons from another receiver but he put those together and that's what he did in one year right that's so, outrageous and, and I, I i grabbed those off off the twitter i, I didn't grab the man's name i, I should have mm-hmm. um so Trying to get better the, at that. Those, those, I, I'll give the shout outs when they were due. Um, <laughs> but I thought that was really interesting just to basically show you the, you know, what he can do in each spot. If the reception perceptions, you know, which, you know, hey, if it was the gospel, we wouldn't need anything else. But it's a good piece to a puzzle. For sure. And there's, there's good stuff there. So it's also a, a, you know, a shout out to, hey, look at him. He got better every single year. He, he's, he's a good player. He works hard. He's got all the talent and he's got put into a pretty good situation. Let's not just go, you know, discounting all these rookies or second year guys that, that are in the league now who put up whatever numbers they did and that, that they can't improve, that things can't change, that the system can't grow with them. Zay Flowers, one that comes to mind. We just did a show about him. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below so you don't miss any of that. Basically, it's, it seems like some people are, are in on Zay. Some people are out. And it's just like they're citing the numbers from this year like they can't change. Like Munkin system isn't year two this year like Lamar and Flowers aren't year two this year like you know Andrews was all they had forever right and Andrews hadn't been super duper healthy the last couple of years either sure also type one diabetic that I don't know how much that plays into longevity come Um, on Andrews stick around for me baby the other point (laughs) of that would be that you know when he wasn't on the field likely he's not a slouch he's they got they got a good backup Uh, but but Flowers you could see at the end of the year even coming along so don't don't just put all your eggs in the basket of looking at the year long thing and the success versus this and that and acting like they can't do different things in their alignments and acting like they can't do different things. So I digress. Um, we have we obviously have a trade. Let's let's talk. Let's let's throw some other trades out there real quick before we get to the meat and potatoes of this, because I think the trade that we pulled off is was very cool. And, I, you know, nobody gives a shit about your fantasy team or whatever. Right. But this is a unique situation. Uh, and it's you know, it's a real league. It's a one hundred fifty dollar league. Uh, it's a Patreon league, so you know, go check out the five dollar holler over there. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our twenty twenty four rookie draft kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your 
pleasure. Wanted to just reference some other trades here. So here's an, here's another St. Brown trade that went down in the last week. Godwin, Worthy, 26 first, 25 first for St. Brown. Yeah, paying up two firsts. Godwin, so, and Worthy's a first this year. You know, like a one at eight, one nine, one ten kind of guy in a super flex. Um, Somebody and, got that Godwin is basically a throw in. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a great move by great whoever move did that. Get, great move to get Godwin on a throw in. But you need extra throw ins to get St. Brown. Right. Depending on without context on what kind of team that was. See that when we trade for St. Brown, we have a championship roster without St. Brown. Mm-hmm. So we add him. So I, you know, obviously anything can happen. You, we, I don't know if it's going to be the one twelve, but we're definitely making the playoffs next year. Mm-hmm. You know, we need a little playoff look like anybody. Sure. You know, I'm going to tend to go with the St. Brown side. I haven't seen these trades you're going to give me. I'm going to tend to lean St. Brown yeah. majority of the time. Jaden Daniels in a second or St. Brown in a third. St. That's Brown easy, all day. Easy it's one easy for me. Now, and this now is in twelve months, and uh, it's uh, PPR, in twelve months, but. if Jaden Daniels comes out here and he lights it up, and he sure could, but St. Brown scoring quarterback points already, right? And there's no guess at whether or not he's a Pro Bowler moving forward, right? You know, you take out the guesswork of the Jaden right. Daniels in that equation. Jaden Daniels could come out here and be a Pro Bowler for ten years, maybe, but he could also be a bust. And that's you take that out, you take you minimize the risk on the St. Brown side yeah, of that trade. And we're going to talk about some of that at the back end of this whole episode, minimizing some risk, taking out some maybes, getting some for sures. Um, so make sure you stick around to the end of this thing. Or if you're on YouTube, it's probably a different video. Go check that out. Um, a rich and Rashi rice for St. Brown and a first Anthony Richardson and Rashi rice, super flex two two tight end or two, uh, two quarterback. Yeah. I might have to go Anthony Richardson on that. St. Brown and the first, the, I mean, I've, if it's an early first and I got a right. really good shot at somebody else, but if it's a late first, Rashi Rice, you know, especially Rashi Rice and a late first potentially kind of can muddy each other up, you know, without take the suspension out. Nobody's giving you Rashi Rice for a random first. Maybe if it's a preferred first and right. it's a elite, top, top you know, three or four protected. You know, yeah, a protected yeah, if you know that team sucks first, that might be different. But let's see. Let's just say randomly speaking, especially in after the six, first six weeks of the season, Rashi Rice is basically worth the random ish mid to late first round pick. You're going to take Anthony Richardson over St. Brown almost every time. Yeah. Well, let us know how dumb we are in the comments okay, or how great. smart you are. Go ahead and do that. Then I'll do one more, and then we'll get to the meat and potatoes of this trade. Caleb Williams, a 25 second times two, so two 25 seconds, a 25 third for St. Brown. That's a great trade. I mean, I, I, we haven't seen Caleb hit the, hit the field yet. He's already a first-round pick. For, he's already a first-round pick. For everything that we think it would be, uh, that he's going to be good. And I, ju- I just said it about Anthony Richardson. That I would take the Anthony Richardson side because Anthony Richardson had as many top five scoring games last year as Patrick Mahomes, and he only played two and a half games. Right. We think Caleb Williams can do the same thing, but that he might he doesn't have that rushing touchdown upside. So maybe in a vacuum, without knowing any other context of the se- of the of the teams in that trade, I might go in, uh, St. Brown and end up with you know. Uh, that's those teams are that's obviously not a startup type question Mm -hmm. that's a that's a team to team trade to trade situation without knowing anybody else's quarterback situation but i might take the again st brown's a guarantee caleb williams probably going to be awesome at least the value is pretty insulated on caleb Williams. absolutely so that's that really takes the sting out of anything where nobody is thinking there's it's it's not physically possible for him to go out there and look as bad as Bryce Young did last year because what he's walking into with the Bears is completely different yeah. than what he walked in that Bryce Young walked into with the Panthers honestly can't think of a better situation that a rookie quarterback has walked into in quite some time I think it's been noted well noted now that it's never happened this way before <laughs> right you know a first a number one overall pick has never walked into a team quote unquote this good before right uh, this ready to roll this many weapons yeah. shout out to the Bears to put this put yeah, these we'll weapons see if around they don't him. bear it up but yeah well obviously but they got, they got so it. I, I could definitely lean the St. Brown trade there. If Caleb goes out and starts balling out, you're not getting Caleb for what we just paid for DJ Moore. Yeah. You might not be at, I said DJ Moore, for St. Brown, I mean. Mm-hmm. For, for everything we just gave up for St. Brown, you're not going to be able to get a Caleb Williams and a Superflex for that equation, for right. those for those assets. It's yeah. going to take a lot more than that. Right. So if it hits, it hits. And if not, you know, you, you're falling back on St. Brown is never a bad plan. Yeah. All right. Well, let's switch to like the theory kind of side of this and how and what we did on the trade, because I think there's, you know, a piece to this that we definitely want to hit on and why we did it. Um, so, you know, I think when you decide you are going to send trades and then you decide what you're willing to give up in those trades and then you zero in on the tier and the tier or the player and the tier of player that you're going to go after. Right. Because that's kind of how the trade set up 
for me in my mind, right? right? I figure out what I'm willing to part with, kind of the idea of what tier of guy I want to go after, right? And then you have to decide who's who owns these picks, where are they in roster construction, where are they in win now, rebuild, all that kind of stuff. So you have to decide all those things. But in this particular case, we started going after A.J. Brown, Olave, and D.J. Moore. Yes. And see, that's the kind of thing that we've been talking about for years um, on this show. So, and Notice we didn't say any of those were St. Brown to start with. Exactly. So we've been on this show, we've been talking about for years, hey, if you're about to trade, if you're about to send this for the 110, you need to send that for the 18 and the 19 first, that yeah. kind of thing. So Same principle. We're, we're, Casey and I, we're, we've been talking to guys in this league. We're on the clock at the 110 when we get the trade done for St. Brown. We're on the clock at 110, but for the last, you know, two, three days before being on the clock at 110, we had been talking to the A.J. Brown guy. We got a price check on A.J. Brown. We started talking to the Olave guy, and Olave guy didn't really know he was a, a rebuilder yet. So we needed to identify the players. When you're looking for a stud, the, bet, the if I got a good chance, if I just won the championship or I just was you know went to the playoffs and I had a really good team, I'm very unlikely to be giving away my top guy that scored all those points to get me there. But like the Olave guy in this league – was not a very deep team, not a very studded out team. And so I started talking to him and said, hey, man, you know, are you interested in potentially working a deal here where I give you multiple assets that can that can help your team spread out because this is a big starting lineup league? And and he said, yeah, I'm interested in that. So we had a, a dialogue going. The, uh, Saint Brent, the DJ Moore guy was on the clock or, or, or in the chat saying, hey, I, I mismanaged my team. I'm setting up for some rebuild here. I want to do some trades. Well, so he and I, he basically told uh, told me, he's like, I'll give you DJ Moore for the 110. And some people might hear that and say, well, that's incredible value. You should snap that up right away. DJ Moore's worth more, way more than the 110. And that's exactly the point that comes back to me coming in here and all the time and saying every league is different and every manager is different. Because in this league, there is the have and the have nots. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of really good teams and there's a couple of uh, rebuilders and there's a couple of teams that don't know they need to be real rebuilding yet. <laughs> right. And so that's how that equation works in this league. So... DJ Moore's been on the trade block for two months in this right. league. He's obviously gotten offers and obviously can't unload DJ Moore. He's some sure sent offers to unload yes. DJ Moore. So now, you, and when you're you in know. the middle of that first round, dude, that's exactly when rookie fever is at the highest. Right. So he's one tens on the clock. This dude is salivating over Worthy, or he's salivating over Jonathan Brooks, or in this case, I know he really likes Lad McConkey, that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's salivating, and he, DJ Moore is a 27 year old wide receiver on a team that sucks. Not not the Panthers, but his team. You know, so. We got that working. He's on the Bears. Right. Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that was yeah, that was yeah. years ago. My bad. We're sitting on the clock at 110, and you and I know we want a stud receiver. That's right. why we're checking A.J. Brown, Olave, and D.J. Moore at the bottom of that stud tier. But then we said, hey, we're going to go up to the next tier. Well, yeah. So once we zeroed in that those were the three guys, and we've now talked about what the price points are with those jockeying back and forth, now it's like, all right, well, these are the prices for this, and this is where we're at. Yeah. What's well, the what's what's the next elite guy we can get? St. Brown. Fuck yeah. Let's go see what we can get for him, right? Well, and it, exactly in this situation, the top elite guys, Justin Jefferson guy wasn't trading him. Uh CeeDee Lamb was not for sale. And, you know, so you and Jamar Chase had actually just been traded the day before in this league, which mm -hmm. is this what this league has been wild and crazy around this draft. So you couldn't you're not gonna go get the guy right. who just traded for Jamar Chase because he thinks he's awesome now. So St. Brown was the other guy in that top tier. We just did our rankings of four mm -hmm. top four receivers, you know, top tier. So we had a we had a deal for DJ Moore at the one ten if we wanted it, but we also had a deal that was going to give up. We had the one ten, the two four, and Casey and I had decided to trade our first next year, which gave us a big bullet. And so we had a quick change. We had a we had an option to give our two four and our first next year and one of our multiple tight ends that would have given us DJ Moore and Pacheco. And so that's, we literally were about to work this deal out. And then we were like, all right, are we going to go to the tier up? And when a St. Brown came on the board, I started talking to the St. Brown guy and said, you know, I'll give you the 110 and I'll give you the 2-4 in our first next year. And he said, I would love to do that, but I need some people, I need some guarantees in my lineup right now. And this is where the trade gets really, really fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he says, I need some guarantees in my lineup because he does, he thinks he wants to win too. So I said, all right, well, I can take that 110 and turn it into DJ Moore right now. You know, so would you would you take DJ Moore and, you know, our first next year and yeah. two four? So not giving you value on the 110 like you want. But Currently. Well, would give you, because he doesn't know what you're going to trade DJ Moore for. Right. But giving you proper value on DJ Moore where he's not giving him proper value. Or yes. He's, he's not giving is, 110 the value that 
uh, we would like him to have. Right. This is a nice string of DMs on Sleeper with the, this guy. And I said, well, I can take the 110 out of that equation and insert DJ Moore. I got a trade lined up over here. And all these other pieces stay the same. So I can bring in DJ Moore. I can give you my first next year. I can give you the 2-4. And I'll throw in, because it was getting late, and I wanted to get it done, and I'll throw in my second-round pick in 2026, which is where all that came from when, I, when we started the show. And he said, Let's, I'll do that. I'll take the deal. And so I had to go make the DJ Moore trade, and we did that. We gave the 110 for DJ Moore, and we because it was late at night, we probably could have had some more back and forth there and tried to squeeze something extra on that, but it was late. I wanted to get it done before the DJ, the St. Brown guy changed his mind the right, next day. Right. Maybe he changed his mind, and it was a long clock, so it wasn't like we, we could have sat on the clock until the next morning, um, but I didn't want the DJ the uh, Amandra St. Brown guy to change his mind. So we gave the 110 for DJ Moore. I think we got back Mason, the backup to the backup to Jordan, the backup. Jordan, Jordan Mason on and running back nine. for the Niners and 4 9. And so because the guy told me, I'll give you DJ Moore for the 110, he was dying to unload DJ Moore and he wanted to be on the clock at the 110. So we made that move. And then five minutes later, we traded all that for St. Brown. And we we're just, you know, ecstatic to get such a fun trade done. And we unloaded some assets for a prime safe stud win now receiver but my, one of my favorite i would rather one of my biggest things in dynasty is if i'm going to trade for somebody win now i'm either do it really cheap for a really you know aged receiver like i don't have a problem going and getting amari cooper right now but i'm not going to give you top shelf price for amari cooper right but i will go out and give you and you know once we decided we were going to pay up for Alave. How much more does it take me to go from Alave right. to St. Brown? And, right. and, and Alave's young too, but even A.J. Brown. So if we trade it for A.J. Brown, he's 27. If we don't win this year, now the screws tighten up on our team. We're just a little bit more pressure because we've emptied the clip on some of these assets. And we have a 28-year-old receiver now who is dominant, but you could all, there's no guarantee you're going to win. Anything can happen in the fantasy playoffs. And so we brought in this win-now player who's also 24 years old. There is zero right. pressure. Right. Right, so that's that's basically the gist of of you know the the theory part of of what's going on. We we decided to push all in. We were at an AJ Brown. We were at an Olave. We could get a DJ Moore, and hey, we could have sat and, and just kept DJ Moore, right? And that would have been fine. DJ Moore, I think, was fourteen points off of scoring three hundred last year. I think he got a QB upgrade. Now there's more competition, obviously. Sure. You know, we could have kept that. We could have obviously, you know traded our first next year probably f to get dj Moore, and then we could have done something else with our two four and had the we, one, had, we had the 110 and so we could have ended up with like a jonathan brooks and dj Moore, and maybe we could have finagled a way to get a pacheco and in, in kind of going on with that dj Moore deal but instead we decided to hey instead of going for a little bit more depth with a player in dj Moore who i like who, who i know can be really good to a saint brown that it uh, paid a little more i had to do a fun little trade swap but we got in the lead asset who's who's not old um, and, and we were just ready to push those chips in and we've made the decision to sell all of our parts and pieces of, of in sight of chasing a, a championship and, and some cash. Because at some point you need to go from collecting a bunch of shit to, you know, going out and spending a little bit for a year or, or so and, and just trying to get over the top with one or two more top 25 assets in, in, in your lineup. Right. And that's that's kind of what we decided to do there. And I'm I'm super super excited about it if we would have got olave younger but we're not a hundred percent sure of the volume what exactly is gonna i like olave a lot i like the projection of olave he could certainly move up in in rankings for sure aj brown we know is elite sure um, well, there's a discount on him right now so great job great great player to go after and that's kind of where we started but then the point is is we started there to go after him because there is a discount and it was like all right well if we're gonna do this we might as well send it up to here yeah. and see what we can do. So that's there, just everybody's, kind of the PSA we wanted to put out there. Sure, and everybody's values are different. But in this league, I felt like A.J. Brown's price was a little bit higher than I wanted to pay. Right. And so we, I wasn't, you know, if I'm going to pay the same thing for St. Brown, I'm definitely going to go get, I mean, for A.J. Brown, I'm going to get St. Brown instead. And then once you make that mindset shift of saying, I'm going to take my first round pick next year and spend it this year, you multiply your buying power because especially right. with rebuild teams, that first rounder next year it just gives them just mm -hmm. some just a wonderful shiny object. And sure, when you get into a negotiation with a sharp player, he should be telling you, "No, Casey, your first round pick. You got a studded out team. That's a late. That's that's the one twelve next year. Right. He should be saying that to you to right. push the you back, back you know. a little. Yeah. So, but you and but and you deal with that nicely, and you keep it moving. Right. All right. What we got next? Right. 
All right, so that brings a, a, the end of the St. Brown and inquiring the elite wide receiver. Now we want to go acquire an elite tight end, right? We want we want more stud high end points in our lineup. This is a, a two point per reception league. Stud um, tight end, right? But real quick before we do that, I want to take a second and say, you know, we've recently linked up with the excellent staff over at Player Profiler, uh, and they've brought us to your fingertips here. Some of y'all are probably hearing us for the first time. We want to say thank you for giving us a chance and making us a part of your day. We hope we can stay in that rotation. Look, we've been around for five plus years. This isn't a new show, so I promise we're not going to go for SIGs one day and just not come back. We're going right. to be around, whether it's here or not here. We're mostly a dynasty focused show that goes all year round. Uh, we have a rotation of co hosts sometimes that who have, and we have different styles of shows. Sometimes they're going to be a little quick hitters in 30 minutes. We might get through six guys, 30 minutes, we might get through one guy. Uh, there's there's kind of different shows. We got Big Co over here. We got Austin Abbott. We got Big D. We got Jay Wayne's on the ones and twos. Got a great editor. He he crushes it. So make sure on the video side of things that you go over to YouTube because, like I said, he's one of the best in the game. And there's a lot of things that you could be missing over there with visual aids, rankings, stats, statistics, all, all sorts of great stuff. So be sure to go subscribe to the YouTube channel and check that side of things out. And once again. We just want to thank you guys for giving us a chance, and I hope you subscribed and we can be a part of your coveted rotation of content. Boom.